to Vanita's Kitchen. What I'm going to be doing for you today is beef stew with pastry. I'm going to show you a few of the ingredients that we'll be using. Um, we're going to be using stewing beef or roast chopped, your, your choice is about a cup and a half. About a tablespoonful of chopped garlic, you can use powdered garlic. A tablespoonful of Worcestershire sauce. We're going to be using flour for the roux. Um, we're also going to be using flour for the pastry. A cup of green peas, a cup of stewed tomatoes or less salt tomatoes chopped, and two cups of bro uh, beef broth. But what I'm using today is uh, vegetable broth, broth. We're going to be using parsnip. I got about an half of parsnip, uh, two potatoes chopped, three um, carrots chopped, and I got about a half of a turnip chopped and a medium chopped onion. And of course, I'll, I'll post on my Facebook um, all of the spices. So we'll start uh, with stewing, uh, with frying our beef. Now we're gonna fry up our beef. We're gonna add in a tablespoonful of extra virgin olive oil and carefully add it into your pan because you've got your pan on medium heat and you don't want to burn yourself. And we're going to add in our beef. Well, like I said, this is about a cup and a half, 500 mill milligrams so a small roast. We're going to add in about a teaspoonful of freshly grated salt, a teaspoonful of smoked paprika, a teaspoonful of thyme, and a teaspoonful of freshly grated pepper or already grated pepper. So we'll let this chill. Okay, we're going to brown this off nice. It's almost ready to add our garlic and our onions, chopped onions. And if you add it nice and golden brown, you don't, you don't have to cook it all the way through, just part ways because we're going to continue cooking it in the boiler with our vegetables to make the stew. Okay, we're going to add our onion in there now, our chopped onions. The beef is nice and browned off, so we just want to just caramelize these just a little. We'll add our garlic in very last because we don't want to burn our garlic because it would make a bitter taste to your, your uh, beef stew. So just fill this around until it starts also get golden brown. Okay, our onions are caramelized. So let's add in our garlic now, and it's about a tablespoon full of chopped garlic. And like I said, you don't need to overcook that because it'll it'll burn. And now we'll add in our tablespoon full of Worcestershire sauce. Mix with this. And mix with all of this frying together. Again, the time medium meat, um, golden brown for your meat. You don't have to overcook it. Caramelize your onions with your beef. Then add in your garlic, and then the last on that one is your Worcestershire sauce. Now we're going to put our mixture into our boiler. Smells amazing in there. Put that going there. And next we're going to make our roux. With the remainder of uh, grease that's out of our beef, we'll add in about a teaspoonful of butter. A small amount. We're going to be making our roux. We're going to use 
tablespoonful of flour. Pop it right into your pan. Just mix that around until it starts to all work together. And now we're going to be adding in our two cups of vegetable broth, but you can also use beef broth and gradually mix this together. So this is going to become our, our thickening for the stew. So mix this around on the medium heat. Keep it going. We'll turn down the heat now on um, the thickening. So what we're going to do now is add our vegetables. Again, this is all pre-chopped, a turnip I'll put on the amount, we got turnip, we got carrot, potato, parsnip, we got celery, so we're going to put it all together in with the meat, because we're going to cook this for two hours until it's tender. We're going to put in our cup of tomatoes. Mix all this together and our cup of peas. So we're going to put this now on low to medium heat. We're going to let it simmer for about two hours, hour and a half to two hours. And then when it's completed, then I'll show you what your next step will be. I'm going to Put our thickening to the side and we'll add, we'll add that to our stew very last, maybe 20 minutes, half an hour before we take this off its boil. Okay, see you back here in a few. Okay, while we're waiting for our stew to boil, we will start with our pastry. And what I'm going to be uh, putting here is going to be about a half a cup of cold butter chopped into square pieces a cup of flour, a tablespoonful of, or a teaspoonful of salt, and about three teaspoonfuls of water. So we're going to start blending this together. Like you said, it's, you could do it in a food processor, or you can just do it by hand. And right now we're going to be doing by hand. We're going to mix all the butter in with the flour first, and get all that mixed nicely through. And then by the end, we will mix in the three tablespoonfuls of cold water. So now I'm going to add in the three tablespoonful of cold water. So keep mixing it together. Like I said, it's a little easier if you do it in a food processor because you don't get messy. But uh, this is a simple recipe for pastry. It's all starting to work together. So just bring it into a nice ball. This will make a nice flaky pastry for the top of your stew. And this is the stew pan we're going to be using. Okay, now that we got our pastry balled up, we're going to keep it, keep it in this container. We're going to put it in the fridge until we're ready to use it and roll it for our stew. Um, it, like I said, in an hour and a half, I'll uh, add in the roux to my stew and then we'll take it off, we'll put it into this pan and uh, roll our pastry for the top. Okay, it's about an hour and a half into our cooking of our stew. So what we're going to do now, we're just going to give it a quick stir. It's coming together really nice. And then we're going to add our thick pan, which I call the roux. Put it all together with flour and butter and the drippings from the, the beef and um, onion. So let's mix all that together. So this is going to be the thickening now for your stew. We'll put the cover back on. We'll let it simmer for another 20 minutes. Then we'll take it off and scoop it into our, our round pot pan. And then I'll... Um, I'll start rolling out our pastry. Okay, while we're waiting for our stew to do its last simmer, 
we're going to uh, coat the bottom of our parchment paper with some flour. Put a little bit in my hand and I'm going to roll it on my rolling pin just so that the pastry don't stick. So I added in the in the fridge for about a half an hour and this helps cool, cool butter in it helps roll it better so let's coat the flour on both sides of, of our pastry remember that this is just for one pie a uh, one stew pie we should say um, if you want to double up on your um, pies if you want to make more than one well then you'll need to double up on this recipe that I'll post on my face page and uh, if you're only making one pie you can take the rest of the stew because you will have leftovers and put it into your bottles and keep it aside for leftovers so we got that side now we'll roll it just a little bit on this side and that's your pastry ready to go is ready to scoop into our pie Put the cover over there. I got the oven turned on to 350 so as it will get it ready to cook our beef stew with pastry. So we're going to scoop up a nice few helpings. So you don't need pie crust on the bottom of this recipe because it'll only be too soft. The pie crust is just for the top. So you scoop off right up to the top of your pie pan. Nice helpings of your stew. And again, it'll be left over, so you want to, to put it into your mason jars to seal and have it for later. Okay, so you don't want it to bubble out over because it'll make room for it to breed. Okay, so this is evenly coated. You can add a little bit more pepper or salt or seasonings if you like. So take your rolled pie crust, put it over the top, and then what you're going to do, you're going to pinch it the same over the sides like you would if you were making a pie. So pinch it over the sides. You can make it this fancy design or you can just have it basic doesn't matter, it's, you're making it for yourself. Keep it nice, so it's all evenly pinched. So now we're going to take a knife and we're going to make little cuts in the top of your pastry because you want to make sure that it's going to breed. This is what it's going to look like. We'll put it in the oven. You could uh, uh, glaze it a little with uh, egg yolk or butter if you want to have it uh, a little more crispy. But keep it in there till it's golden brown. It'll take probably half an hour in your oven. And then let it cool quite a bit. Not all the ways, but to room temperature before you cut to serve it. And then I will show you when it comes out. High is now baked. Um, that was in there for about half an hour until it's golden brown. So this is what she's going to look like when it comes out. Let it cool to at least room temperature before you cut it. Um, this, uh, this recipe is perfect for any, any occasion and uh, St. Patrick's Day is right around the corner. So uh, again, you could use it for that or just for comfort food. Um, if you're you know, looking to subscribe to Bandit's Kitchen, um, you will get updates of any videos that have been posted over the last little bit, so please do subscribe. If not, just go into my face page and look at all of my recipes. Thank you for joining me for Bandit's Kitchen. Remember, any leftovers, bottle it, use it for leftovers. Um, you have a wonderful day. Definitely try beef stew with pastry. Thank you and have a wonderful day.